Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. All right, so today we're going to talk about the approach to the CTAPE or CTHS for pulmonary embolus. Um, as with other studies, first you want to get a sense of the clinical context, patient history, any known abnormalities, taking a look at priors. And then we'll take a look at first quickly assessing the adequacy of the study and then go into each part of the pulmonary arterial vasculature and then ultimately looking at for secondary signs of pulmonary embolus or right heart strain. Um, we'll look at other acute vascular pathology that could be revealed by the fact that it's a post-conscious exam and other vascular structures are highlighted or opacified as well. And then from there, you head into a usual CT chest search pattern. Um, and I'll leave kind of the finer details of that to the dedicated video on the CT chest. All right, so let's get started. So uh, having taken a look at the clinical context, um, one of the first things we can do um, it's a good practice, as usual, to take a look at the localizers and remember to look at anatomy that's in this, that potentially may be outside the field of view of the cross-sectional images. And then we can go through and take a quick look at the atmosphere of this study, looking for a streak artifact, mixing artifact motion. And then one of the first things I do when looking at the um, pulmonary arteries is to assess, just to get a gestalt sense of the level of opacification of the pulmonary arterial vasculature. Here we have a mean sound field units in the mid 700s. Generally, things measurements um, approximately above two to three hundred uh, generally allow a diagnostic exam. Though this is going to be modified by patient body habitus, streak artifact, and motion, and other mixing artifacts. Um, you can see here that pulmonary arterial vasculature is more opacified than the systemic vasculature, which um, can be useful. But as long as you have enough uh, contrast. Uh, in the pulmonary arteries, then you can look for pulmonary emboli. So we're going to go through the pulmonary arterial vasculature bit by bit. So we're starting at the main uh, pulmonary artery on um, the right side. And then I don't actually in my head name each segmental branch, but I'm, I follow out the right uh, pulmonary artery into the low bar, low bar, lower low bar, and then just knowing that I'm looking basically for five branches. So you can see one, two, three, four, and then I'll follow each of those out. Um, to the kind of basilar segments out into subsegmental branches and in just kind of enumerating in my head and then looking at the more superior uh, segmental branch in the right lower lobe and kind of doing the same for the uh, medial and lateral uh, segmental branches in the right middle lobe and then out as far as we can go into the smaller branches and then into the three branches of the right upper lobe. Okay, and we're doing that bit by bit. And then we're going to repeat the same sort of pattern on the left side, again, enumerating the differing numbers of from the low bar, let's see, low bar to the uh, segmental subsegmental branches, and then not forgetting the uh, kind of more superior branch here in the left lower lobe. And then looking again into the lingula, and then other sub uh, segmental and subsegmental branches to the left upper lobe. And we're just going to be particularly careful. I just want to remind you to make sure that you are able to trace those vessels to the pulmonary arterial uh, kind of um, tree rather than the pulmonary venous uh, distribution, which you know can, such as in this study, also be opacified based on contrast bolus timing and patient characteristics um, as to not confuse the venous anatomy for the arterial anatomy, okay? Um, in addition to looking on the axles, which I always do, uh, I usually like to use at least one other projection or one other reconstruction. The coronals I find particularly helpful. Um, and for these, I, put, I, I like to zoom in and, and um, scroll and look uh, especially carefully at the lower lobes, but ultimately at all of the uh, pulmonary arterial vasculature, again, from centrally to peripherally throughout the entire distribution of both lungs because this can help you pick up more subtle um, emboli because it lays out the vasculature well. I won't use the sagittal routinely unless I need to problem uh, solve any you know abnormality that is that might possibly be better delineated. Um, though you can see that the sagittal reconstructions do lay out the anatomy well as uh, additionally. Um, having searched out for pulmonary emboli, you know, we're gonna look for secondary signs of right heart strain or CT evidence thereof. So we're gonna assess the relative um, you know, relative size of the right-sided heart chambers to the left, 
um, the width of the right ventricle to the left ventricle. We're gonna look for reflux of contrast into the IVC, hepatic, uh, hepatic veins. Um, and then once you've taken a look for pulmonary emboli and then any sort of signs of right heart strain, we're gonna look at the other uh, vasculature that is opacified by the contrast bolus. Um, we happen to see part of the arterial or, or the systemic vasculature. So going from the aortic roots, um, we can look for normal coronary artery origins, even though this is not a gated study, and then follow the aorta up into the arch, looking following those branch vessels out to the periphery of the study, and then the aorta down into the upper abdomen and those main branches as well, looking for normal course, caliber, any sort of acute pathology, including intramural hematoma, um, dissection, aneurysm, those sorts of things, okay? And then from that point, um, you can kind of transition into a more conventional CT chest search pattern, uh, which for, for me generally encapsulates looking at the airways, down to the lungs and pleura, uh, ultimately soft tissue structures such as lymph node stations, mediastinum, the remaining of the heart, um, upper abdomen, incidentally imaged neck, and then um, on various projections, the bones and more subcutaneous and muscular structures. Um, and that will be discussed in greater detail in that dedicated video. But to give a quick recap, for the CTAPE, uh, as usual, we're gonna take a look at the clinical context and assess the limitations, particularly contrast bolus delivery, motion, mixing, and shriek artifact. We're gonna go through the pulmonary vasculature, um, in at least two projections following out the contrast bolus as far as we can uh, into the peripheral and smaller vessels, looking for secondary signs or CT signs of right heart strain, looking at other uh, vascular structures, particularly the systemic um, vasculature of the aorta and its branches, and then transition into a usual CT chest search pattern.